Good day. This is Sedlo. Today we are in DCS World, and this video is a follow-up to the previous video that I recorded where I postulated the possibility of making a series of uh, tutorials about mission making. And while I do uh, like the idea, and it's something I want to do, uh, to be quite honest, my ability to do so uh, these days is kind of hampered, uh, free time and all. Um, so I'd still want to make a tutorial series. It's not going to be about scripting or in-depth scenarios and stuff, but it's going to be just the basic building blocks of making a mission and how I go about doing it. Um, you may learn some things, some tips and tricks. You may not. Um, watch this video and see if you learn anything. And if so, maybe I can continue making them. Anyway, um, in the first video, I said, hey, read up on this stuff. Be passionate about it. Know how military operations are conducted or have it just a general idea and get smart on radio communications. Have a listen to that YouTube link. Uh, the video's on there. Gives you an idea of how they say things, what they say, the cadence and whatnot. Um, because honestly, I think communications is really makes for an immersive mission. And uh, I just like it. So here we are in the mission editor. First thing I do on every mission I make is I make a mission start trigger. So make a trigger, mission start, name it something unique because this will come in handy when you have to sort through everything. You get a list of like hundreds of triggers and it's important to have it uh, unique and easily identifiable. Okay, so when you do a mission start trigger, you do not need any conditions because it fires at the time the mission starts. And I like to set flag one as on at this point. Now you can name this anything you want to, as long as it's, you know, recognizable to you. And basically, I base a lot of triggers off of this flag, uh, since, you know, time since mission start, whatever. Um, have a flag at mission start that you can base future triggers off of. I guess that's what I'm saying. Okay, um, so you have a general idea of what you want to do. The first thing I do is I place air-to-air -air refueling tankers and an AWACS. If you have these in your game, I like to place them at start airborne. Um, some people like to make them take off and go to the orbit place, but I find the simpler you keep things in the mission, the better chance of things not screwing up, the easier it is to make, and it's just less hassle. So let's go ahead and put an AWACS in. Go to New Plane, we'll select an AWACS. Today we're going to select an E3 and just pop it somewhere on the map where you're going to want to have it. Now, first thing I do is I rename it because the default is Arial 1, Arial 2, whatever. It gets monotonous. You have a list of aerials. You got to try to figure out what is what. So let's just uh, let's just call it this. Uh, let's go with Overlord, the default one. So for the group name, I say Overlord. For the pilot name, it's Overlord 1, okay? Keep these different. It's important if you're going to do some scripting later to have a, a group name and a, the pilot or unit name slightly different, I find anyway. Going down in the list, the frequency is 124.0 AM. Okay, military aircraft generally are not using the VHF band for this. Make a UHF frequency for it, somewhere between 225 and 400, okay? And don't just do 251.0 or 305.0. That is that is the vanilla version of it. Make it spicy, make them interesting, make it uh, unique. Let's go 234.725. All right, 
25 kilohertz spacing on these radios, right? So everything's in a 25 kilohertz space. Uh, 725, the next one would be 750, right? The next one would be 775, okay? Um, just know for that when you put this in, the radios have to tune in the 25 kilohertz spacing. Um, all right, so also write this down. Put this in your Excel spreadsheet or whatever, a piece of paper. The AWACS is on 234.775. Okay, moving down. The altitude initially is 6,500 feet. Screw that. Change it to 30,000. Mach 7.72. That's fine. And the advanced conditions, you see it's AWACS and EPLRS. EPLRS uh, really, in this case, means data link. It is the link 16, or whatever they want to call it, is here. Um, that's on, so that's uh, giving data link information to players. If you do not want uh, to have data link available, you can just delete this or switch it, double click it, and switch the value, uncheck it. But I want it. So you also need to have it orbit somewhere, because if you just pop it here, it's just going to land at the airbase. So to, in order to have an orbit, you need at least two waypoints. So we have our start waypoint here. Let's add one more here. So this aircraft is going to go from here to here, and right now it'll just go back and land somewhere. You need to have an orbit task, and you put that at the first waypoint uh, you want the orbit to start from. So uh, go advanced waypoint action, add, under the perform task menu, there's orbit. And name this, okay? This is very important too. Name it something unique. Um, it may come in handy later on down the road when, you're, when you've are when you got hundreds of triggers and you need to do something with this, all right? So AWAX orbit, it's in a racetrack. But look at this airspeed. It defaults to 232 knots. That's over the ground. And that is up at 30,000 feet, slower than this airplane can really fly. All right, it's going to fall out of the sky. You need to make that speed higher. How high, you ask? Well, just look over on the right here. 0.72 Mach is 430 knots. So just throw 430 in there. Now, with this the way it is, it's just going to keep orbiting and orbiting and orbiting until basically it runs out of gas. And for a single player mission, that's pretty much fine. You don't really need to worry about anything else. Um, if you want it to uh, go and land somewhere after the orbits are done, just add another waypoint. Oops, sorry. I have to do that from waypoint one. Add another waypoint, have it land. But go back to the initial one here, under Advance, under Orbit, put a stop condition, check is user flag, and then set this to a flag that fires at the end of your mission or during your mission when you want that air aircraft to break its orbit and go land at that airbase. Set flag 99 true in the mission uh, triggers, and then this will stop orbiting and it'll go do the next thing. All right, 999, I just use that because I, I at the end of my missions, I set flag 999 as true. Uh, you can do it whatever you want, but basically that's it. In DCS, all orbits are left-hand turns. Okay, so this thing is going to go to waypoint one. It's going to turn around, fly down here, and come back again. Orbit between these two points. So there you go. You've got an AWACS in-game. One thing you might want to consider doing is this. Um, Okay, you have your AWACS here, and say you have Russian fighters here, you're doing something, uh, your mission's taking place over in this area of the map. Sometimes a Russian fighter will just whoop, make a beeline and go and shoot your AWACS down, and you don't want that to happen. So how do you avoid that? Well, you make him invisible. So you go add another advanced waypoint action under the perform command action, Scroll down, invisible, that's checked, and call this AWACS invisible. 
So now the other AI in the game cannot, quote, see, unquote, the AWACS here, and they won't attack it, all right? I like to do that with all my high-value targets unless it's part of the scenario where they're under threat or whatever. So yeah, make them invisible. Okay, next we're going to put a tanker in, and it's a process very similar to the AWACS. Okay, we select the plane. Let's just put it down here. We're going to change it to a, well, a KC-135. That's fine. Um, so you've done your research. You know what the different tankers do. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but again, like the KC-135, we plopped it down. First thing we're going to do is change the call sign, or the group name, sorry, Texaco-1. Um, we're going to call this Texaco 11. Vanilla frequency again, not good. We don't like that. Let's go there. Okay. Write it down. Put it in your Excel spreadsheet. You're going to need to know this later. All right. So, um, what do we have? We're going to set the uh, altitude to 24,000 feet. That's a good tanking altitude for most jets. Um, we are going to set the orbit. We need two waypoints, though, so we're going to go there, back to the first waypoint. We're going to add the orbit task, perform task orbit, 24,000 feet. And again, that puts too slow of an airspeed. We're going to bump it up to 430 knots, and we're going to name it Tanker Orbit. All right. So that is done. You'll notice, though, there's a new thing in here called Activate TACAN. And if you've done your reading, you know what the TACAN is. So I'm not going to get into that as well. It defaults to 1 X-ray, call sign TKR. And if you just want to leave it at default, you think, hey, that's fine. You put that in, and it doesn't work in game. And the reason is you have to link it to a unit. All right. And by default, this is blank for some reason. Change it to Texaco 1-1, okay? Right here is Texaco 1-1, and it's in the list. Now this thing will broadcast on one x-ray. Tacan, there's Tacans all over the map, okay? You want to make sure you're not conflicting with anyone else. If there's another one x-ray on board this map, this thing is going to get all screwed up. So what you do is you go over to view up in the top menu here, beacons ish, uh, info, and you look at the TACANs that are available or that have been used already and pick one that's not available. So one x-ray is here and it's fine. So we'll just go with that. Don't forget to name these. And again, I like to change it this is not the same as this, but something should be in these fields. All right. So what do we got? We got an AWAX in game. We've got a tanker in game. Uh, you know about the beacons to deconflict with that there. You know how to make an orbit. You know how to make a high value target invisible. So that's good. And uh, so, yeah, that's the first step in my mission making. One thing I like to do is uh, save each mission if I, I'll so I'll show you what I mean we're gonna save this right we'll save this um, a tutorial by Sedlo is what we're gonna save it in we'll call this tutorial version 1.0 all right I don't use a decimal in the file name it's gonna be weird 1.001 all right, this is tutorial 1.001. If we go into this and start messing around, and uh, then I'll save it as 1.002. And yes, there is an autosave option in DCS. I know that. Uh, this is just something I do in case I screw something up and overwrite it or something happens, I can always just go back to my previous version and I don't have to do the whole thing from scratch. 
Okay, that is it from Sedlo. I don't have anything else to say. Um, if you have any suggestions or things that I've missed, please uh, leave that in the comment section below. Um, standard YouTube thing, you know, like, subscribe, hit the bell button, whatever. I don't care if you do or not, but there you go. There's it. There's your things. Oh yeah, by the way, one thing to think about. If you have campaigns installed on your uh, in your your game, sometimes they will overwrite the liveries, or they sorry they won't overwrite them, but they'll appear first in the list. I'll show you what I mean. Go to the arms section here, and this is UT Air Force from some campaign, and it's listed as the first one, so that automatically does it. Change them to something else. We're going to change this to a NATO. And this to uh, USAF standard. Okay, we're going to save as version number three. See what I did there? All right, that's all I've got. Take care. Said Lo, uh, we'll talk to you later.